Hi everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about the law of the farm and how it relates to being more happy and more successful in your coaching practice. Now, I believe I first heard of the law of the farm from Stephen Covey probably 25 years ago. It's a simple teaching, but I believe it reveals some important truths behind many of life's natural processes, specifically building anything of value anything that has a hope of being successful. It takes time, it takes care, it takes attention. You can't leave things to chance. You can't ignore critical factors. You cannot not study all year long then cram on the last night before the test and expect to do well. You can't wait to plant your seeds until late summer and expect any sort of harvest in the fall. Yet this is exactly what many coaches do Again and again, I run into coaches who take all their training certifications and perhaps they take more training before they ever start to get serious about learning how to find enough clients and earn a steady income. And, and, and this approach causes a huge amount of needless suffering in the world of coaching. Just as a farmer carefully chooses the crop and prepares the field and puts in the time to water and tend the growing seedlings, a coach seeking to build a viable coaching practice needs to do a few key things. Firstly, you need to begin to think about the business side of your journey. Like when you first begin your coach training, start thinking about what type of coaching you most want to do. Start noticing what type of clients or client work engages you the most and really aligns with what you're great at, what you're interested in, what you're passionate about. Secondly, Take the time, make sure you take the time to really confirm directly oh, with those ideal clients, what are they really struggling with? Not, not what's just simply annoying them, but what are they, they really hoping to change? Confirm that there are enough of them out there willing and able to hire you and, and pay for your coaching. Confirm you can find a few reliable ways to connect with dozens and dozens or better, hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, each month. When considering different ideal client groups or niches, a really good acid test is to check and see if there are dozens of other coaches around the world succeeding in this area already. You know, if so, this is not a bad sign. It's actually a great sign. It confirms a genuine need. And don't worry about there being too much competition. If you do your homework, if you pay attention, you're going to be able to get your share of that market too. Now, thirdly, um, once you confirm and really understand the needs and interests of your idea clients, you're, you're going to have to figure out how to connect to them. I mentioned this briefly in the, in the previous one, but this is really important. So it, it uh, benefits from an elaboration. You know, there's a process that potential clients go through. Uh, at, at the start, they have never heard of you before, and then they have to become aware you exist. Perhaps they learn something from you and get interested in you. Uh, perhaps they begin to appreciate about how what you know can help them solve their problems. Um, perhaps it takes a while for them to understand coaching and understand your coaching solution and and get their questions and, and concerns about coaching answered. And most potential clients have never tried coaching before, so they have a number of concerns. So it takes a while before they finally get to a place that they can really trust you and understand how coaching can help them solve their problems. So this takes time. And really the law of the farm points out that you reap what you sow. In coaching and in life, you reap what you sow. If you want a good harvest year after year, it requires a long-term view of and, and really being a good steward of the land and cultivating a renewable crop. And, and likewise, good marketing requires a long-term kind of win-win view at, at building awareness, at adding value, at creating trust. Really, it all comes down to building long-term, mutually beneficial relationships. And you cannot fake this. You cannot rush it. Good marketing is not about pushy, shortcuts, hype, miracle, one-size, buy-now solutions. Any sort of inauthenticity, any sort of salesy, uh, hyperbole-filled approach 
really has no place in, in modern marketing and certainly the marketing of professional service. It will always land like you're inauthentic. It'll always land like you're trying to manipulate. And it's no basis for a genuine long-term relationship. And, and really, and no coincidence here, how you, how you live and really how you market absolutely impacts your coaching. You can't be all about you uh, and life or as a marketer and then instantly change and, and show up uh, as a trusted, empathetic, put your clients first partner in your coaching work. How you live and how you market absolutely has an impact. What, you know, within the ICF core competencies, they call your coaching presence. And, and when you supervise coaching calls, you, you see this, you can feel this in, in the coaching sessions, you can feel it in the relationship a coach has with their clients. Now, it, it's a fact that almost every coach that I've ever known is, is concerned about their marketing, is reluctant about their marketing, doubts their, you know, they know how to do it. Which is why so many good coaches keep kicking the problem down the, down the road and hoping it'll solve itself later. But the really good news is that in reality, coaches are actually fantastic at the core skills of building great relationships. They're great at listening. They're great at asking important questions and really connecting with your clients. And these are the core skills needed to market in a sustainable win-win way. So in, in summary, you know, my message in this video is be authentic, be yourself, be true to yourself. You, like me and anybody else I've ever known, may not be perfect, but chances are you're perfect to the people you're really called to work with. And if, if you trust that and you go out there and find where you're needed and be generous sharing what you know will help your clients, and just seek to be of service, you're going to find out a way to do that. And if you, if you follow through and, and trust yourself um, and, and really live by the law of the farm, you're going to have a long and happy and successful career in coaching. So good luck and uh, good coaching, everyone. Take care.